Okay, so today's topic is abortion. And I'm looking specifically at a video from Breaking Points. That's with Sagar, Crystal and Sagar. I don't know if any of you know this show. Uh, they were the hill until they broke off and went their own way, started their own Breaking Points. And this is a title that says, Rogan has heated debate, all capital letters, on abortion. Okay, and they don't mention Seth, who's the CEO of Babylon B. He's the one who's he's having a debate with on his show. So I think that's very disrespectful. I think it shows their antagonism against Christianity there at breaking points. Uh, Crystal is a liberal anyway. She's a liberal Democrat. And Sagar is not exactly a conservative Republican. So it's not really quite a fair playing ground. All right. What I want to do, though, I made a couple of extensive comments on this, so I want to play a little bit of it. I want to read the comments and play another part of it and then comment some more. I think this will prove quite interesting because you're going to hear one of my watertight reproofs of an argument that pro-abortionists have to legalize abortion or certain abortions. All right, here we go. There was a really interesting uh, conversation on the Joe Rogan podcast with Rogan and Seth Dillon. Seth Dillon is the CEO of the Babylon Bee. I think he's an evangelical Christian. And they had a real argument around abortion, uh, which I found really, I thought it was important that this actually happened on the biggest podcast in the world and just exposes some of the interesting arguments around everything. Let's take a listen. You don't have the right to tell my 14-year-old daughter she has to carry her rapist baby. You yeah, understand to that? To look that woman in the eye who's, who was the but born listen, of a rape. But listen, you understand that? That's a 14-year-old child. I if you, a 14-year-old child gets raped, you say that they have to carry that baby? First off, he's talking to him in a very extremely disrespectful way as if he's the rapist. Really. He's talking to this guy as if he's the one who raped his 14-year-old daughter. I don't know if Rogan has a 14-year-old daughter, and if he does, if she's been raped before, I don't know. But he's talking as if that is something that is real to him. Maybe his sister was when he was a kid. I don't know. But he's talking to this guy so disrespectfully, I want to punch him in the face. Rogan. Because Rogan is a, he's a royal idiot. Every time I watch him talking to people, at least sometimes he's humble. In this case, he's not at all. He's the caveman with no brain, you know, that he kind of comes across as anyway, or his brain's shot out by dope. Let's go ahead and listen to some more here. But I have to say also that Seth is a very limp man. He's not a very solid man. He, he's kind, he's patient, but he's not a very solid man to stand up to Rogan, for example. Let's, let's listen to what he has to say, though. I don't think two wrongs make a right. I don't think that's murder, not, I don't I don't think think murder is an answer to, I don't think murder fixes a rape. What if we're talking about an abortion when the fetus, like, literally it's like six weeks, four weeks, three days. What if she just turned positive just now? Positive for pregnancy. I don't. I, well, I just disagree that. What if can, it just happened today? You can like draw a line on when. You can't. Like, once life so you has can't begun, do, I don't at think the you draw very lines. moment. Now notice he doesn't address murder. He doesn't say it's not murder. Instead, he wants to talk about when. So he's trying to do like the Pharisees did, and I make that comment here too. You'll hear it in my comment. Let's listen to the rest of this minute. I would lay it out like this. I would say, it is wrong to intentionally kill an innocent human life. Abortion intentionally kills an innocent human life. Therefore, abortion is wrong. And I don't think any of the, I don't think any of the examples of like, oh well, how developed is it? You know, can it, can it think? Is it conscious? Can it dream? Can it feel pain? So for you, it's the moment of conception. I think that if it's a, if it's a human life, an indis a distinct human life, then I think it's wrong to, to end its life. Um, and so you think that even, once? Do you think that like once the conception happens, there's some sort of a miraculous event, like at the very moment? Like you could literally get to the point where the sperm cracks the egg. If you could scoop that egg out right there, would that be abortion? Well, I mean, at some point you're going to have to say there was a magic moment that happened because you believe that we eventually become valuable humans, right? Okay. All right. <laughs> so the first one I wrote, I said, yes, the baby did not rape the girl. 
Now, when they say, well, you know, what, you can, you're going to tell my 14-year-old daughter who was raped that she has to carry the baby to term, uh, to pregnancy? That's, his, that's the argument, right? And they're challenging you based on the emotions of a 14-year-old teenager who was assaulted and traumatized through rape. And they're trying to use that as a justification for murdering a baby, a living human being. I said, yes, the baby did not rape the girl. He, she does not deserve the death penalty for a rape it did not do. End of story. That's your argument against it. When they say, well, what about in case of rape? And I had someone just ask me this recently, a Ukrainian, we were discussing the abortion issue. And she asked me, she says, what about in the case of rape? And I said, the baby was not guilty of the rape. So why murder it? You're punishing the baby for the rape by murdering it. Capital punishment on an innocent life who hasn't even seen another human being face to face yet. And you're going to give it capital punishment, murder it for a crime, very horrible crime committed by some man. Why should that baby be killed instead of that man? Go find the man and murder him. Put him on trial, of course, right? To make sure he did it. And then execute capital punishment, not on the baby, on the man. Killing the baby is not going to alleviate the conscience of the teenager. It's going to compound the trauma. That's what you say. And I go on, I say, uh, Rogan's an idiot. Rogan doesn't engage in a conversation. He beats the other person with a club. He's an idiot. Rogan is like the Pharisees questioning Jesus, trying to find some tiny crack to find him wrong on. This other guy is holding his own, that's Seth. Though, as a man, he's quite limp. All right, so now let's listen to how Sager reacts to this, okay? So that was really, right? I, 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 look, I want to say at the top, like, I get it where Seth is coming from. I think it's a very religious position. I think that's fine. You know, people are entitled to believe whatever they want. But Rogan did an excellent job there of actually drilling down into what the application of that means on policy and then how it is then extrapolated onto the general public. Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't mention policy at all. Didn't mean mention anything about the application of policy to the general public. No, not at all. Rogan, it was all personal. Had nothing to do with policy, politics, application of policy by politics and politicians onto the general public. No, there was none of that. Maybe somewhere else in the podcast, but not the part they played. And notice his, his dismissal of religion. Oh, I believe people can believe whatever they want. This kind of thing. Well, I understand, you know, it's a religious view. So I wrote this, <laughs> okay, ready? Look, Sagar, that's the guy who was talking just now, the host, one of the two hosts. We tell parents that their teenagers cannot drive a car until they have a, a driver's license after the age of 16. Why 16? What is the magic moment that makes them capable of driving a car? I use the term the Rogan uh, uses, or Seth, I don't know which one, magic moment, that makes them capable of driving a car. If they take the class of 14 and pass, can they drive a car? No. No, because the government says that they can't. The government tells us we can and cannot do certain things in certain circumstances. So, yes, we are going to tell your 14-year-old daughter that she has to carry the baby to pregnancy. Yes, absolutely we are. How about smoking cigarettes? Why did they tell parents at what age their children can start smoking or drinking or having sex legally? Why would the government care? 
Why would the government want to regulate for parents when their children can smoke or when they can drink alcohol or when they can have sex? Why would the government regulate that? Think about it. And then think about what Rogan was saying that you can't tell my 14-year-old daughter that she has to carry to pregnancy a baby from a rape. Yes, we can. Just as much as we can say that she's not allowed to have sex until she's 18. Let's keep going. And abortion is far more serious than any one of these or all of these put together. Cigarettes, alcohol, and sex. The argument about punishing the child for the rape is the most stupid, moronic thing I've ever heard. And what's worse is people think they are smart making the statement, like Rogan. Rogan thought he was so smart that he had him cornered. No, he's just demonstrating like a peacock his idiocy that he can't think for himself. And what's worse is people think they are smart making the statement, you included, Sagar, for thinking Rogan did a, great, uh, did a good job here. And life is religious, so stop trying to segregate out religion. Most of the human race throughout all of the human history have been religious. Only stupid, stuck-up, self-centered people do not believe there's a God and, and do not try to find out how to please Him. That's my comment to them. So now you've heard that the argument against this issue of rape is that killing the baby is going to compound the trauma, not alleviate it. You cannot execute capital punishment on one human being for another human being's crime. We're just talking about adults. You can't kill me for his crime. It's not fair, it's not just. How less just is it to kill a baby who has never even seen another human being's face for the crime of some man who's still out there who hasn't been caught? Or maybe he has. It doesn't do justice in any case to kill that baby. It doesn't. There's no justice in it whatsoever. There's no alleviation of trauma and pain and suffering. There's no justice in it. There's injustice in it. It's wicked and evil. So don't ever let anyone bring up that argument to you and get away with it. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.